Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this 31st Sunday of the year. In the Gospel today, we hear about Zacchaeus, that man who was known to have cheated those around him. Sometimes we too can cheat others around us by not telling them things, or by telling them things that are not true, for example. Let's come before the Lord, asking Him for mercy and forgiveness for those cheat part of ourselves. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Lord, the whole world before you is like a speck that tips the scales, and like a drop of morning dew that falls upon the ground. But you are merciful to all, for you can do all things, and you overlook men's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that exist, and you loathe none of the things which you have made, for you would not have made anything if you had hated it. How would anything have endured if you had not willed it? Or how would anything not called forth by you? have been preserved. You spare all things, for they are yours. O Lord, who love the living, for your immortal spirit is, is in all things. Therefore you correct little by little those who trespass, and remind and warn them of the things wherein they sin, that they may be freed from wickedness and put their trust in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will, I will bless, bless your, your name, name forever, forever, my King, King and, and my, God. my God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. I will, I will bless, bless your, your name forever, forever my, my King, King and my, and my God. God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, 
slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who, fo all who fall and raise up all who bow down. I will bless, I will bless your, name your name forever, forever my King, King and my God. God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his call and may fulfill every good resolve and work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling to meet him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or excited, either by spirit or by word, or by letter purporting to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not on account of the crowd, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we hear the name Zacchaeus, the first thing that people remember about Zacchaeus is that he was a very short man, kind of midget, I don't know. From childhood, I always felt sorry for this poor guy. You know, this short man who desired to see Jesus that he had to climb into this tree. But the fact is that the focus of this narrative is not really about how tall Zacchaeus was or not. The real point of this narrative is the fact that Jesus has an invitation to Zacchaeus. We're told that Zacchaeus was a wealthy man. He was a senior tax collector. They were despised by their contemporaries. He was Jewish, but collecting tax from the Jewish people on behalf of the Roman Empire. And often these tax collectors took more than what was needed because 
they too profited off the tax that they were collecting. He was wealthy because he cheated others. He wasn't really a great role model at all. Now, we could say lots of things about tax collectors today, but I won't dare to go down that road. In many ways, Zacchaeus is not unlike us. You know, we may not be tax collectors, but we too know that in each of us there is a greed and a selfishness. There is always the desire to have more, perhaps, than what we really need. We know, too, that we do wrong that at times we too are not good role models to our children, to our communities, and to people that we work with. And yet, we also know, if we look carefully at this text, that Zacchaeus is searching. He's seeking something. He has a God-shaped hole within him that he is trying to fill, and maybe he's trying to fill that with this cheating of others, thinking that the more he has, the better he will feel. And he discovers that his wealth has not fulfilled him. He's still hoping for something more. There's still a desire that is bubbling away inside of him. His life does not give him the fulfillment that he desires. He must want to see Jesus. There's no doubt about that. He must have heard something about Jesus. And perhaps these desires or these hopes within him nudge him to just get a glimpse of Jesus. Let's look briefly at this encounter and what it teaches us about our own desires. Notice that Zacchaeus climbs a sycamore tree. We all knew that when we were children as well. You may not know any other tree in the Holy Land, but we've all heard of a sycamore tree. In some ways, it strikes me it's a bit of an odd thing to do because when I've been with crowds of people, normally short people are moved to the front and children are put on the shoulders of taller people so that they can see. Was this just about seeing Jesus? Or was Zacchaeus in his search anxious and therefore in a way wanting to see but also wanting to hide? Was he trying to hide because he knew he had issues. Right from the book of Genesis, we know that when human beings get it wrong, they try to hide from God. Often the first reaction we have when we have done something that we are not proud of, when we feel guilty, is to hide. To hide away physically, to hide away psychologically, emotionally, and even spiritually. It's a craziness, but we think too that we can hide from God as we can from one another. We find a tree, we find a place or a space where we can hide. We we want to know what's going on, and yet we also want to hide. What trees do we hide in? when the Lord perhaps passes by. It could be the tree of drinking excessively or even drinking dependently. It could be gossiping about others. It could be criticizing or bullying people on social media. It could be pornography or gambling. It could be bitterness or anger. There are so many trees that we can hide in if we decide to do that. What tree might be the tree that you tend to hide in? Notice the second thing that happens in that text. Jesus comes by and he does two things. He calls Zacchaeus 
And then he invites himself very boldly to Zacchaeus' house. In Luke's gospel, Jesus regularly goes to people's houses and he regularly invites himself. He wasn't always the best when it came to invitations. He would just invite himself. But notice that Jesus looks up and Jesus sees Zacchaeus. And to see him in the gospel is more than just a physical thing. He sees a person. He sees his potential. A potential that Zacchaeus may not even himself have seen within. To be seen, to be noticed, to be recognized, to be given dignity when nobody else around you is doing that. Notice Jesus doesn't call him by a function. Notice Jesus doesn't call him out because of his weakness or his fragility. Jesus recognizes him as a person and calls him by name. We too are called by name by the Lord. And often the Lord recognizes a potential in us. The Lord notices and honors us and gives us dignity even when we don't do that for ourselves. God sees us not defining us by our deeds or what we've done or not done, but God sees us as people, persons with names. And Jesus also invites himself into Zacchaeus' house. I want to stay at your house, Jesus says. He doesn't just want a meal. Now he wants to stay over as well. In the Greek, this is very close to the word abide. I want to abide in your house. There's echoes of John chapter 15 in what Jesus says. That you abide in me and I will abide in you. Jesus is really inviting Zacchaeus to abide in a long and lasting relationship with him. It is, a, it is a staying with someone or remaining with someone because it finds its root in love for that person. Jesus wanted to abide in Zacchaeus, and so too he wants to abide in us. To put it into kind of Catholic theological language, to make us into living tabernacles, to abide in us. He says to Zacchaeus, I want you to be a living tabernacle. I wonder how many of us, when we hear these words, would turn away because we think we're not the kind of people that Jesus wants to abide in. Or perhaps we begin to wonder about our guilt. Would Jesus really want to abide there? And yet, he calls to each of us, asking us not to waste our lives sitting in a tree, because he wants to abide in us. Jesus wants to be with us even when we're weak and even when we're in the dark even when we're feeling uncertain. He is there contemplating, as he does with Zacchaeus, the scene and trying to show us his love and his mercy. A love that we have trouble understanding because we usually don't know it because we don't offer that to one another. It's the kind of love that only God can show. Jesus chooses to abide in Zacchaeus not because he's perfect or he's got it all together or because he has a nice house or because he has lots of money, but because he wanted to so show Zacchaeus that he could be much more than what he thought he was. We need to remember that too. We aren't loved because we are good. We are good. Because we are loved. Where's Jesus inviting you at this moment 
to allow him to abide in your life. And the final thing I want you to notice is the transformation that takes place in Zacchaeus. From someone who's taking from others and taking much more than what he is supposed to be taking, to a man who now gives, we are told, fourfold. Zacchaeus is changed from hoarding people's money, he gives it away. He gives it back. He tells Jesus his story, and then he realizes that what he is searching for was not somewhere out there, but rather within him. He gives generously. His encounter with Jesus, he's allowing Jesus to see him, to abide with him, gives Zacchaeus a completely new outlook on life, one in which he discovers that it is from within that he will find what he is looking for. Where might Jesus at this time be inviting you to move from taking to giving? How might Jesus be inviting you to transformation and therefore a new outlook of yourself and others. Let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our God desires to abide within us and amongst us. Let's now bring our prayers before the Lord, asking Him to be with us where we need it most. For the church in her ministry to God's world, that she may be faithful to the example of Christ, seeking out those who are lost and searching, in so doing, drawing them into fellowship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our world, formed and loved by God, yet disfigured by our human greed, that evil may be thwarted, justice may flourish, and peace may reign. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who work in public service, especially in South Africa, that they would serve the common good with honesty and integrity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all whose lives are dominated by fear and anger, and therefore choose to hide, that they may be graced and changed by the tender compassion of God, who calls them by name. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel unseen and unrecognized, that they, through us, would hear God call them by name and therefore come to know that they are seen, noticed, and given dignity as the beloved children of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our needs known to you in faith and in trust through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and of all God's holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our God and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your Church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your Church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Bhutti our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may we, your church, stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection 
give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in the blood of Christ, bring us a life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Amen. Peace be to God.